Oh, I don't even think I put my airplane mode on. <laughs> um, we'll do a little bit, being I, I just did the uh, teaching at my daughter's, and uh, I figured out, I don't know if I'll do any more uh, talking today. But being I made that first video, maybe I'll put them all together tonight, where I did a little review, and I had the uh, radio on and on. I'm watching the coverage. Now, I'm at my daughter's house, and I should have had my motorcycle out here, my son-in-law's. Let me do a little coverage of media coverage. I'm catching some of the news. Um, comment after comment after comment the last few days. And I just saw it again. Bernie Sanders on CNN. Trump is attacking, blasting, and personally going after uh, the mayor of, uh, I guess, San Juan, Puerto Rico thing. Why does he continue to tear her down, insult her, going after the heritage of... Now, I have not looked at all of the tweets that they're referring to, but just from the media coverage, nonstop, is Trump has decided to attack not only the mayor of San Juan, who's a female, but it's nonstop. And he's now doing it today from a golf thing. Bernie Sanders on. He is tearing her down. He is attacking her. It's nonstop. The victims of the, uh, I guess it was Maria, which was the most recent uh, storm hurricane that hit Puerto Rico. Granite power is out. But as I'm watching the coverage, I'm having to question whether or not it's as bad as they're saying it is. Because the governor of, uh, I, look, I'm not even studying this, I'm just giving you a, the governor had said, oh, yeah, a lot of people are upset because the internet is out and so forth. And he was kind of criticized because he seemed like he was saying it's not that people are stranded dying as we speak, which some of the media are actually saying, that Trump is... Uh, attacking Puerto Rico as people are dying in the streets. Now, does the media manipulate even coverage and footage? There was one clip I saw just the other day, and this was on the main news, and this is where you got to watch it to see what they're showing. They showed some people leaving an area of Puerto Rico, and they were in water maybe up to their waist. And they said, look at the devastation. Look at what Trump is attacking. Look at these people are uh, flooded and they're abandoning. But what really happened in that particular footage was that little water they walked across. I'm close to the Oso Bay. It was a regular waterway that's been there for years, meaning they were walking across one of their little bays or ponds because the actual bridge that you normally would walk over what was indeed blown out. But the impression, meaning they weren't out there stranded in areas of Puerto Rico and it was so flooded that they had to flee for their lives in that footage. Though the media kind of gave you that picture. Now you say, do they do that? Yes, they do. There was a famous uh, footage, this was like 10 years ago, and I remember even the own media people laughed on camera. What was that, John? It was some storm, some hurricane years ago. The woman was giving a live shot on ABC, NBC, one of them, because I remember Matt Lauer laughed. Matt Lauer laughed. As she was giving the video, live video, of the devastation, she was in a canoe. And the camera was rolling in a particular street, wherever it was, Louisiana. Now, she was in a canoe saying the flooding is so horrendous. Life is being lost. Look at this. Now, remember, they're adding all this now to Trump. Trump attacking nonstop the, the woman, the same one there. And then as she was given this footage, somebody in the background walked right past her. It meant the water was about a foot high. It, it was enough for her to get the canoe in and to say, look at the devastation that the world is denying. And then when the people walked behind her, live on 
regular news. Matt Lauer laughed. It must have been the morning show. He And he laughed because he was saying, you're giving all of us, including the studio of the news, the impression, and you're lying to us. And that's what they do. Now, I'm just watching the coverage. And according to what I'm hearing reported, though I've not read Trump's tweets, I would have the impression that he is out nonstop saying to that woman, racial slurs, you're a f that's the impression. And if all the tweets, go look at the tweets, I've not looked at them. If all they're saying is, well, it, on the ground it's really going better than you're indicating, then they have absolutely twisted it because that's what fake news is. Now, I talked about the border wall, and I talked about the DACA. Any true person that wants to help the young immigrants that came through this country would really be supporting the possibility that you can pass real immigration reform this year. Because Trump, if you're a real watcher, really concerned for those kids, you could see that Trump did some deals with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, and, and he actually, you could see he wants to pass something. Now, why were they so upset? President Obama even made a very critical statement when Trump basically didn't let the DACA program, which was simply an executive order, continue. And I question an executive order is simply a president can make a certain decree about various things. Some they legitimately are allowed to do executive orders, but if you overdo it, then they're challenged in the courts. Obama's executive order was very temporary for kids that have come to this country when they were minors, their students. It was a very temporary thing. It would be like you, you yourself, if you're a citizen of this country, would you like every two years to have to reapply for a temporary status to stay in the country? Meaning, would you want that to go on for the rest of your life in the United States? If every two years you had to go to the immigration office and say, I need to reapply, and it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a solid thing, but it's temporary, nobody would want to do that. Why did President Obama want his executive order to stand instead of for Congress to actually pass a law that made their residence permanent. This is how bad the media is. I believe President Obama, the way they pushed it, that they would have preferred that the executive order, which was temporary protection, that they had to reapply for every few years, pay 500, whatever. I believe they would have preferred that because they could have looked down the road and said, the kids can stay in the country, not because of a law that was passed by Congress and the president, particularly Trump, but now they could stay simply because for the first time, an executive order by a president is now looked at as law. That's kind of how they push that. And if you were really concerned for your kids, you don't want them under that dagger every two and a half years or so that they had to reapply. So it's all a game. They would have preferred the honesty on the Obamacare, which anybody that looked at it would tell you that thing had tremendous problems. And if you really wanted to correct the Obamacare, why did the media begin saying, I watch news? This is how they reported it the last couple of weeks. The Republicans want to kill Obama care. Does do the media use phrases and words that they're aware have a particular effect in the country? Of course they do. Of course they do. And they didn't always refer to it as the Republicans quote want to kill Obama care. But they did it that way. It puts in the minds of the public not that people are out to try to kill Obama care. It puts in the minds of the public a negative, violent, terroristic 
white Nazi. They want to go out and lynch black people. They know what they do when they do that. Now, when Representative Scalise just recovered his injuries, he was shot by a person who was a Democrat. Okay? He was a Republican congressman shot by a Democrat who aligned themselves with very liberal views and made no mistake about it. When Tate Kaczynski, the famous Unabomber, if you remember that far back, he was the Unabomber. They found in the little shack that Kaczynski lived in one of the books by Al Gore. I think it was something on the global warming. Meaning, when you have radical people that are on the left, Antifa, whatever, when they act out radically, and it's obvious that their connections to particular violent acts could be traced to very liberal views, the media never want to make that connection. When you had a Sarah Palin, I was no fan of her, simply say we're targeting certain Congress people, the media actually used the simple term that Sarah Palin said we're targeting certain people, and even the New York Times blamed acts of violence on her. But when you had a Democrat, a vowed Democrat, act out and shoot that Republican by the name of Steve Scalise, when he finally recovered, his injuries were a lot worse than we thought, the media said, they actually said how the Democrats and the Republicans all joined together, which they did, and the media basically was given almost an impression that none of the views of his radical views, that man, who was an avowed Democrat, had anything to do with his shooting of a Republican. Now, they don't do that when it's on the other side. When they felt like just the phrase targeting should have been exposed, meaning Sarah Palin said, we're targeting certain people, they felt that was actually could, uh, was a response to certain violent acts in the country. But when a Democrat actually shoots a Republican, Meaning, I'm a Democrat, I hate Republicans, I'm targeting them at a baseball game, and I'll shoot as many as I can. There's no connection to say, maybe you shouldn't use the term in the media this week that Republicans want to kill Obama care. They connect to that. Okay, they connect that. I'm not a defender of the Puerto Rican response, but all I'm seeing and I just saw it from Bernie Sanders, uh, Trump is on a tirade attacking victims of that hurricane. He, he cannot, uh, uh, his own attacks from a golf course, this is the media. This is the media. Remember what I told you on the DACA thing. President Obama also came out and was very upset. They would have preferred, listen to me, my Hispanic friends, Many in the media have even convinced Hispanic, sincere Hispanic activists that it would have been better to just stay with an executive order by President Obama, which was not permanent, nor was it stable. It was simply a temporary reprieve. The chances of getting a permanent reprieve, the Dreamers, the DACA, the chances could be so much higher right now but some don't want it. Some that say they advocate for the Hispanic community don't want it. They would have preferred the temporary order to stay in place. And then they could look back and say, for the first time, we had a president make an executive order that even the courts looked at and said was beyond his scope. And they could have said, wow, for the first time, the country actually accepted a particular president, Obama, that his executive order is now ingrained as law because it just can't be, because it can't be challenged. But but you you Hispanic advocates, you didn't advocate right by taking that position. And even those of you that claim to advocate for the Hispanics, you Hispanic leadership, I saw some of you on TV, and you're still wanted that docket in place, and now you've got a, the greatest chance, the 
because of what I told you about Trump's willingness to work with Schumer and Pelosi, the Republicans, even under Ryan in the past, were willing to do something permanent on it. And Trump has got some of his base mad at him. You have a greater chance now to do something. And you see that, meaning you could do permanent protection for those kids, and you don't want it. You don't want it. You want a position. You're out there every day. In the next, within the next six months, there's a possibility that Congress could pass permanent protection for DACA. And that's why Trump even tweeted and said, according to the media, Pelosi won in the tweet, Trump wants to give permanent protection to you DACA kids, to you dreamers. But your side, those that claim they advocate for you, they want a political thing. That's what they want. Because if you knew it was really the life of your kid, the chance of him staying in the country, you would work because it can be done. But the Democrats are not going to let that be done. I just told you and explained you why. So the whole thing is a game. Puerto Rico, yes, they got some problems. Uh, and even on the news right now, as you're watching, they said, this is how they were explaining some of them, even CNN. They said, Trump's going to come visit. What do the people in Puerto Rico think? They said, well, some of them want him to know that, believe it or not, some of the homes were uh, destroyed, and which we had right here. Okay, we understand that. They said, and they want him to know that they still can't get online. They still can't, and, and they want to be active to... Some of them want to actually get on. I understand that. I had a week of no, not being online. But would you portray that as one of the greatest tragedies ever? They were pushing for this. They were pushing for this. And all I'm seeing on the news is Trump is out attacking, attacking, tearing down, destroying, picking a personal war on a nonstop Twitter attack. And all of the mayor of San Juan, all she's trying to do is save the lives of these kids drowning in pools of water because Trump is so busy attacking her. And even the questions that they asked, the CNN, one of them earlier, said, let's ask you this, mayor. What do you think that President Trump has chosen to personally attack you nonstop in a Twitter tirade? That's how they put it. I didn't see a single tweet that would fit that description, but they fed that question. What a disgrace.